Okay, so this is um, example 8.3.1 uh, from page 378 of the Duffy and Beck Beckman text. Um, so we're asked to solve for um, the temperature in a hot water tank. Um, so we're given a few things here. Um, the mass of the tank um, is 1,500 kilograms, um, and that's water. Um, the um, loss coefficient area product um, of the storage volume or, or tank is 11.1 .1 watts per degree Celsius, um, which you have to multiply by um, 3,600 seconds per hour to convert that into um, joules per hour, which we'll have to do later. Um, uh, let's see here, the ambient temperature um, is 20 degrees Celsius um, and the initial tank temperature um, is 45 degrees Celsius. Um, and then in a table in the text we are given um, the useful energy gain, QU, um, as well as the loads um, for that tank, how much water is drawn from the tank. Um, for each hour. Um, and with that information, um, we are asked to find um, the temperature of the tank at each hour for 12 hours. So um, we're going to start here by solving for one hour by hand, and then we're just going to implement it in a spreadsheet to um, uh, get the rest of the hours um, iteratively. Um, so there are three um, methods of heat exchange um, in this tank. So first we have the loads, which are um, given um, in the example in the text. Uh, then we have um, solar gains, which are also given um, in the text. Um, and these are um, calculated by the delta T, um, which is given by equation uh, 8.3.1. Um, and then the, the next uh, mode of heat exchange is with the surroundings. Uh, we're losing heat to the um, surroundings by convection off the tank surface. Um, and this one uh, we can calculate with equation um, 8.3.3. So the first part is um, we need to know how much energy potential is in the tank to begin with. Um, so um, calculate energy potential of the tank. And we do this with uh, that first equation, 8.3.1. So um, the amount of heat uh, in the storage unit that is that is available to us is a function of the mass of the tank and the heat capacitance of the fluid in the tank and the temperature difference between the tank and the surroundings. So if we do a quick unit check on this, um, we have kilograms for mass, and we have um, CP up here. Uh, could have mentioned it earlier. Uh, in the example, um, the heat capacitance of this fluid is 4,190, um, and the units are joules per kilogram Kelvin. So down here we have joules per kilogram Kelvin. Um, and all of that multiplied by a temperature difference in Celsius, which is equivalent to Kelvin. So you can see that kilograms will cancel out, as will Kelvin, and we're left with joules um, for the units here. And so plugging in some numbers, um, we get 1500 times 4190 times our temperature difference, which is 45 minus 20. 
I punch that in the calculator, we get 157.1 megajoules. So if you just punch that in, you're going to get 157 million joules. Um, so that's sort of step one here is just calculating well how much energy is uh, there in the tanks. So next, we have to include some of our um, uh, some of these modes of heat transfer. We're going to include first the load um, and the solar gain, and we're going to um, essentially use the same equation, but using um, but flipping it around a bit. So now we're going to include QU and LS. Um, so QS is equal to, in this case, what we calculated before, 157.1. But now we're going to include zero solar gain during this first hour and 12 um, megajoules of load as per the table um, on page 378. Uh, maybe on the next page. I, I forget if it's on the next page or not, uh, 379. So um, when we calculate that, including those um, important gains and losses, we end up with 145.1 um, megajoules. And that is equal to the mass of our tank, 1500 times CP, 4190 uh, times, uh, we're going to call this T intermediate right here. So uh, as we finish this calculation, that will make sense. Um, minus the ambient temperature. Solving for T intermediate, um, we get uh, that it is equal to 43.09 degrees Celsius, 0.1, either way. So, you know, you take 145 um, right here, divide it by 1500, divide it by 4190, and then add 20 um, back onto the other side, and then you get intermediate temperature, 43.09. So um, next we have to include, um, we're going to come up here, to the top point, draw a line there. Um, so come up here to the top page again. Um, so now we're going to include loss to our surroundings. Um, for that we're going to use equation 8.3.3 um, TS plus, so time at the next time step essentially. Um, is equal to our T intermediate, or essentially the temperature of the tank uh, in light of the loads and um, gains, plus um, our time step divided by MCP, mass of the tank and the heat capacitance of that heat transfer fluid. Again, the useful energy gain the loads, um, and now um, the convective losses times uh, TS minus TA. Sorry for running out of room up here. Just squeaking it in on the edge there. Okay, so um, here we have our T intermediate is 43.1. Um, our time step is, I should make that a lowercase t actually, Our time step is one hour, uh, mass is 1500, CP is still 4190, QU is still zero, loads are still 12, UA um, is 11.1 .1 times 3600, um, TS is 45, and TA is 20. So once you plug all those numbers in, you end up with 43.1 um, plus an additional loss, which is negative 0 0.16. Um, so you end up with uh, TS plus 
equals uh, 42.9 uh, degrees Celsius for the end of hour one. End of hour one. Okay, so the table um, from page 378 gives us uh, these 12 hours. Um, and then next we're given the solar energy gain at each hour and we're given the load profile at each hour. So for, for this first piece we um, um, had zero solar gain and 12 megajoules of, of loss and the initial tank temperature is 45 um, degrees. So let me clear these contents here so we can type them all in. Um, um, over here on the right, you can see I've set up the system parameters. Um, heat capacitance of the tank is uh, 4190, mass of the tank 1500, ambient temperature is 20 uh, degrees Celsius, and the heat loss coefficient is 11.1, uh, which is equal to um, 39,960 joules per hour. So I have to change the units on that one because we're looking at hourly data. Um, so... Um, for this first uh, thing here, QS, how much energy is uh, in the tank, essentially. Um, so uh, that's equal to the mass of the tank times the heat capacitance of the fluid times uh, the temperature difference. So 45 minus T ambient. Um, and... Uh, we want this in megajoules because that's the units of our solar gains and loads. So we're going to um, divide by 10 to the 6 to convert from joules to megajoules. Um, because as you, as you can see, our heat capacitance is in units of joules per kilograms Kelvin. So you've really got to make sure that you're tracking your units through this stuff. And that can, that can really um, throw your answers off in any situation. Um, and uh, in order to be able to, to drag this column all the way to the ground, everything that's from the parameters section uh, needs to have um, need to have those cells held so that they don't move anywhere. So you get 157. Um, if we look back at what we calculated before, um, you can see that uh, that is exactly what we got right here, 157 megajoules for that first step. So that's great. Um, that equation looks like we've implemented it correctly. Um, so then we move on to the next cell, this T intermediate. Um, and for this one, we um, want to um, add up the different um, loads and gains um, in light of the ambient temperature to figure out what the temperature of the tank is in light of those uh, factors. So um, we're going to have our solar gains minus our um, loads plus um, the ambient or the um, total tank potential energy essentially in light of the temperature difference. Um, and now we have to multiply it by 10 to the sixth for the, the megajoules and joules conversion. Um, because those are in megajoules, we want to get back into joules briefly for this intermediate step um, because we're going to have to multiply by those system parameters again. Um, and then we multiply by MCP. Um, so again, we're going to want to just tag these ones with dollar signs so that they get held when we drag those cells down. Um, and right off the bat, I see I made a mistake. I have 23.1. I also need to um, add in the ambient temperature for this step. Um, and we're going to put dollar signs on that one too. 43.1. And so if we go back to our handwritten example right here, that answer 43.1 after implementing this, this equation um, right here into our spreadsheet. So that's great. So we did that step correctly as well. Um, and then um, the last piece of the calculation is just to calculate, well, what is that final temperature at the beginning of the next uh, time step or the end of this time step? And so to do that, we use equation 8.3.3. Um, 
and this is equal to that intermediate temperature that we calculated here in light of gains and um, loads plus now the um, losses to our surroundings. We haven't included that yet, so that's the last piece that we have to include. And I could have done all of the T intermediate and this last calculation in one step, but it's a little bit more transparent by splitting it up. The textbook doesn't split that up, and it makes it a little bit um, hard to figure out. Um, so plus um, 1 over um, mass of the tank times the heat capacitance um, times the uh, energy gained minus the loads minus 11.1 um, times 3600 which is uh, this number over here uh, m in the m column uh, 39,960, 11.1 times 3,600, to again get it in units of joules instead of watts, because um, a watt is a joule per second, so this is actually, that's a typo right there, I'll fix that in a minute, um, and then you have to multiply that UA sub S term by the temperature difference of TS, tank temperature minus T ambient. Right, then we got to close all of our parentheses to add a few um, dollar signs in here to lock these cells so we can drag them down. C2, D2, M5 needs to be locked. And K4 needs to be locked. Okay, that should do it. All right, so the typo I mentioned earlier, this one right here, should not be watts per second. That's just watts. Um, and then that means that when you multi, that's because a watt is a joule per second. So we want joules, so joules per hour of hourly data. So that's um, this cell you can see is simply 11.1 times 3,600. Okay, so back up here to our H column where we had just typed in that last T sub S to the plus um, equation. You can see that after we do that, we get 42.9, which going back to our hand calculation right here, uh, that's what we had. So we've implemented that equation correctly as well now. All right, so now that we have that, we should be able to simply set uh, this cell in column E um, equal. So this is the tank temperature at the beginning of, the, of time step number two. We should be able to set that equal to the, the temperature of the tank at the end of the previous time step. Um, and so if we drag that down through all the hours, and then we proceed to drag these guys down through all the hours and then plot it, we will get the, the temperature over time uh, at all of those time steps. And that's uh, the solution for this example. Thanks for listening. Again, this has been example 8.3.1 in the text.